how to become money wise. This is a really important topic and one that I feel needs to be preached on a lot more than it is in the public arena because regardless if you're earning $20,000 a year or $300,000 a year, we all need to learn how to manage our money wisely. So it's not about the income level, it's about what we're doing with it and whether we've had wealthy parents or poor parents, I've seen so many people that still cannot manage their money well at all. So it's an important t topic because money, they say, is the biggest stress in life. It's not the mother-in-law, it's actually money. It causes a lot of havoc in relationships when it's not managed well. And today, because we live in such a fast-paced lifestyle and we're also busy, 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 it's one area that often gets neglected to actually relook at things and to check if the, our insurances are adequate to what we're wanting or if we're actually doing things wisely and also just where is our money going. I'll just quickly tell you a little bit about myself. I've been helping personal, people with personal finances for 11 years now. I've come through the budget world and I've come through the bank as a personal money coach. My business now is called Vision Coach and it's a solution focused business. I, it's based on strategic intervention planning and the four areas I cover are wealth management coaching, which is financial freedom, teaching people to manage their money skillfully and well. Time management coaching, which is setting goals to work smarter, to improve productivity. Priority coaching is how to have a healthier work-life balance, prioritizing your values and your needs. And then we have dilemma coaching, which is good when you're stuck or at a crossroad. Cross road. So it's just transitional and negotiating life. So they're the four areas that I deal with. The reason I um, love coaching is because being in the bank and being in the budget service, people just weren't making sustainable change. I was getting frustrated with them because I'd always usually, well not always, majority wanted to be rescued and didn't want to actually fix things. So when I discovered what life coaching could do, I decided to train with the Neuro Leadership Group up in Auckland due to their powerful questioning techniques they teach us and you actually, um, yeah, just the results are phenomenal. So I decided to quit my job because I thought, you know, I needed to equip and challenge people. I was just getting too frustrated where I was. So I stepped out and went out on my own and I really, yeah, really do enjoy it, so it's good. So I've been married for 26 years and the reason I like money coaching is because my husband, dare I say, was hopeless with money. I got married when I was 21 and I was shocked. I actually did not realise people were like that. And I was naturally always good with money, so I do know the stresses that money can have on relationships. For the first five years was a bit havoc. I would be trying to save and he'd be spending. And he didn't know where it went. It was not good. And the reason he changed, I'll mention later, because it takes desire and a strong will to change. You have to have a reason to change, otherwise you won't. Emergencies and life hiccups will happen, it's natural. Life never goes smoothly as we know. The washing machine will break down, things will happen. Brian Tracy, a business guru, says that success is based on how quick and how well you recover from failures and setbacks. So keep that in mind. Even though your goal is up here and you've got a budget and you're going through life and your aim's here, you might hit a setback and you're going this way for a while. That's okay, don't freak out because you don't throw the goal out. You leave the goal there and as soon as you can, you, you go back up the mountain again to the goal. Most, a lot of people just freak out and say the budget didn't work and close the book and that's the end and they carry on as always. Don't. And of course, discipline. You need to be focused and you need to, um, yeah, just stay on track and discipline. Because that nice Apple Watch or that nice dress in the shop might look really tempting, but those short-term splurges, unless they're in the budget and you're, you know, going to give yourself a reward for doing so well, they will set you back in the long term. Most people do what is easy rather than what is necessary for long-term change. The law of less resistance is that many people do what is fun and easy rather than what is necessary for lasting success. The New Zealand Institute of Economic Research, last year I read somewhere, said that New Zealand has an ever-worsening savings crisis 
which will lead to inadequate income in retirement years. So even if, and it showed on a graph that we had a 23% decline in savings in the last 20 years, that was last year. So even if you don't think you've got a goal, there's nothing that you want to be saving for, we all need to be aiming towards financial independence for whenever it is we're going to retire, be it 65 or 70. Because the super, that $500, or roughly 500 and something dollars a week for two people, or 300 and something for one is not enough. And at the bank, I uh, had 101 clients that had total money control over their income. That 20% were on the super, and I've seen it. It's a struggle. You need to have money from elsewhere that you're drawing on, whether it's from family inheritance would be great, or whether it's from shares or gold or investments and in property you've bought, you need to have money somewhere to be drawing on. Otherwise, you're going to be living a minimalistic life, which is fine, but if you've got debt as well, or you've got rent that you're paying, it's a very big struggle. Let's say you know your priorities, you know your needs and wants, and you've got this fabulous budget, and you're going to really be determined, and you're going to, you've made the decision, why is it that some people still fail? This is the biggest problem, and this is the hardest, well, the challenging one to solve, but it can be solved. And that is because 80% of success is psychological. 20% is the doing. The actual training and the doing of the budget is the fun and easy part. It's the head stuff that needs dealing with. Our wrong beliefs and our attitudes about money uh, is what's not helping us get ahead. The way we think, the way we perceive money, our thoughts, that inner critic, that voice that goes on unknowingly, because it happens at a subconscious level, but it affects the way we deal with money, it affects the way we manage money, it affects our ability to attract and earn money, and it also affects our ability to keep money. And I've seen that a lot too. Like you've given someone a great budget and then as soon as they reach $200 or $500, it's gone. So usually it's also because they haven't got a goal or a reason to be saving, which is a hindrance. They ne you need a reason, like I said earlier, the desire has to be strong enough to make it sustainable. But also you've got to be aware of that voice and you've got to have tools and strategies to get rid of it and to believe in yourself that you can do well. You may have heard it said that if you want to make a million dollars, copy someone who did make a million dollars, but the truth is, if you actually want to get the same results as someone who made a million dollars, you can't just copy their actions, you need to know and copy their beliefs, because that is why they've done what they've done. So, um, just... The dictionary definition of belief is cognitive content held as truth and this gets lodged into your subconscious brain. And then that belief is what dry, affects our feelings and then it drives our behaviours, our actions, which gives us the results we end up with money. So it's not the budget, it's often not your income that's the problem, it's your subconscious beliefs that are affecting your, your income or your ability to earn and keep income and manage it well. So our beliefs come from mainly our parents, what we heard from them. Then, it come, then we create our own beliefs by the way they treated us. And then some of it comes from our environment. And then we copy other people's beliefs and we take it on board. And there are lots of beliefs that can be going on in our heads. There's thousands. These are just some. It's just too hard. I'm not good enough. My parents were ri weren't rich. I won't be rich. Money is the root of all evil. Rich people are greedy. As soon as I've got money, I always spend it. You've got all these things that are happening subconsciously. And until you actually recognise and start taking note daily, start recognising when you're doing things what you're thinking, then um, you can eliminate it. Because whether you think you can or you can't, you're right. Argue your limitations, and sure enough, they're going to be yours. Then you've got, as a man thinketh, so he is. There's lots of them, and it's because it's so true. People who have become millionaires or people who have learned to manage their money well, and they came from dysfunctional families, they've come from humble beginnings, and they've had to work on these things because these things would have been affecting them. It's like Tony, Tony Robbins, Oprah Winfrey, Bill Gates, 
Brian Tracy, and there's many more. So if they can do it, then we can do it. And they had a big enough reason why they wanted to change. It's not just um, magic, it doesn't just happen, it takes work. Solutions, apart from what we've said, hang and connect with positive people. People who are wanting to achieve well with their money or with their life. Because when you hang with negative people too long, it drains you. If they're being the victim, you know, all those sort of things, they affect the way you think, the way you talk, and what you actually end up believing in for yourself also. Like I said, learn from those who manage their money well, but also remember, take note of what they're believing, what they're saying, because if they're managing their money well, they're not thinking in their head, it's never going to happen for me, because they know it's not, that it's a lie. Working on having a positive attitude, confidence, it's all those taking that negative stuff and casting it out, and also, like, listen to motivational tapes on YouTube. There's so much on the internet nowadays to spur you on. Get educated. There's books, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, The Richest Man in Babylon, I Will Teach You How to Be Rich. There's, those three are really good books, and I'm sure there's lots of others' books also. Get help. Get yourself a mentor, a buddy. Accountability is huge. Get yourself a coach. Because being accountable to someone powers you towards your goal. Because you know they're going to be asking how you're doing and challenging you. And like I said, being grateful kills having a men uh, victim mentality. It helps you to take a better perspective of life rather than just focusing on the negative things. And they say now also that um, gratitude is a very powerful tool for personal transformation. And research shows that if you keep a gratitude journal for three weeks, it increases your satisfaction of life by 25%. So I'll give you the challenge, keep a gratitude journal. Just think about three things every day you can be grateful for. It can be the wind in my hair. It doesn't have to be huge. It can be I woke up this morning and just focus on those for three weeks and see how much, see what outcome you get. So again, it's knowing your priorities. What do you want out of life? It's all really good. And for my husband, the reason he changed and managed to stick with a budget or allow me to create a budget and give him an allowance, <laughs> that's the way it worked for us, um, was because his priority was his kids. He wanted to be able to give them something later on. He wanted to be able to pay for their university or the tertiary, further tertiary education because that, being Italian, that was his, his goal. He didn't want them to have debt. And that was a big thing for him. So there's no right or wrong. It's just whatever it is for you that's going to enable you to do the work, to change. It's not rocket science. It hasn't changed since day dot. Spend less than you earn. <laughs> it's, it's simple. Budget. To manage your money to best suit your needs. That's why you're doing it. It's, it's a plan. It's a map. It's an, an, it gives you a way... And also, if you're keen to know more about this, do join my monthly newsletter. It's only a month, and there you'll get more tips in regards to money. Because like I said, there's lots to talk about money. So this is just stuff that I chose, because I thought this is more important. Psychologists say that the key to success is um, instant delaying instant gratification. Instant gratification is the killer for people. And again, that's all mindset stuff and beliefs and lack of discipline and all that. So basically, I hope I did what I said I intended to do. I've given you information in those areas of the do's and the dares and um, the ditch. The ditch is the important one. So yeah, get yourself educated, do your homework, take up the challenge of being aware of those little voices in your head. And if I've helped hundreds of people with their finances. So if you feel, if you think you should be doing better or that you could be doing better and you think what I've said today is going to be too hard for you to tackle on your own, then I'd love to help. I do offer a 30-minute free consultation just so that you can see what I could do and I can see if I can help, basically, and we go from there. We could help, I can help you discover your priorities get some goals in place, create a budget and a spending plan, keep you accountable so that you stay on track and see it completed, and also just empower you and equip you 
so that you actually do succeed with your money and are feeling financially secure and then on the road with confidence to being independent later on down the track.